Football game in Chapel Hill, but tonight it's all about basketball as we welcome you inside the Smith Center. Tonight. But before we do that, before we do that, we have to, the traditions, the traditions of this building. We started this about two years ago. I need everybody in the building right now to stand up. Everybody stand up. Everybody on your feet. Everybody standing up. Now listen, if you are beside a Carolina Tar Heel fan, I need you to put your arm around their neck right now. If the person to your left is a Tar Heel fan and the person to your right is a Tar Heel fan, I need your arms around them. Now listen, when the beat drop, we start to the left. We start to the left. Whatever your left is, you start to the left. Very, very slow. If you're missing somebody, you might want to close up. You might have to close up a gap. You might have to close, close a gap or two. Now we're going to start to the left and go very slow. When the beat drop, we'll speed it up. DJ Nevy. Wait, wait. Arms, arms. There we go. There we go. We're hugging. Nevy, drop it. Slim. Ross. Well, let's meet him up first. Wearing number two, a 6'1 guard from West George, New Jersey. Give it up for Elliot Kudo!
a 6'9 freshman forward from Rockwell, Texas, wearing number one. Let's meet Zayden Hall. Let go. Six foot ten forward from Gary, Indiana. He's number thirteen, sophomore Jalen Washington. We've got a jersey number change this year, wearing number seven, a 6'3", sophomore guard from Manamani Falls, Wisconsin. Come on out, Seth Trimble! Texas, a six foot seven junior forward wearing number 55, introducing Harrison Ingram. If you know the dance, do the dance. To the left, 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 left. Go crazy, go crazy, go crazy. We've got a 6'9 junior forward from Maidenhead, England. Let's meet number 32, James Okonkwo. A 6'4 senior guard from Greensboro, North Carolina, wearing number 22, Rob Landry. A 6'1 guard from Greenville, North Carolina, wearing number 14, senior Creighton Levo. A 6'6 grad student from Charlotte, North Carolina, He's got his own band. They're called Rosemary. Check them out. Put your hands together for number 34, Forward Dewey Ferris. Don't play like that, Dewey. Don't play like that. Number three. A six foot five graduate guard from New York City. Please welcome Cormac Ryan. They call him Seaback. They call him Seaback.
Yeah! A graduate student from Charlotte, North Carolina, a six foot nine forward, here's Jalen Withers. Charleston, South Carolina. A 6'5 guard. Make some noise for Paxson Wojcik. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, from Richmond, Virginia, wearing number five. A 6'10", forward slash center, grad student. I need you to make some noise for Armando Rico. Okay, now that's the team. We have to meet the coaches. And this gentleman did not want a big deal made about this, so I will not make this a big deal, even though it is a huge deal. 20 years on this bench, I need you to make some noise for the Director of Basketball Operations, Mr. Eric Hoot. It's star-studded over here. It's star-studded over here, folks. In his first season, first season, on this Carolina bench. Hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. wait. I gotta read my card. A three-time All-ACC point guard and an All-American in 2014. His number five hangs in the Smith Center rafters. Let's welcome back to Chapel Hill, Carolina's director of team and player development, Marcus Hay. This next gentleman played in three Final Fours as a Tar Heel and won a national championship in 1993. You dig it? He's in his seventh season in Chapel Hill. Carolina Basketball's Director of Recruiting, Pat Sullivan. In 2005, this gentleman earned the most outstanding player in the NCAA tournament as he led the turn Tar Heels to that 2005 National Championship. Yes, he won a second no, check it. He won a second NCAA title as a member of the staff in 2017. In his ninth year, assistant coach, Sean May. As a
As a Tar Heel player, he won two ACC regular season titles and an ACC tournament championship, a 30-year coaching veteran, and in his third season on the Tar Heel bench. Make some noise for Jeff Lebo. In his 11th season on the Carolina staff, as a player and a coach, he has been a part of the Tar Heel teams that reached five Final Fours and that 2017 National Championship. Make some noise for assistant coach Brad Frederick. And now we have one more person to meet. He was a player at Carolina from 1988 to 1992. He's Carolina's career record holder in three-point percentages, the 20th overall pick in the 1992 NBA Draft. He played 12 seasons, third all-time in NBA history in three-point percentage, spent seven years as a college basketball analyst and co-host of ESPN's College Game Day. As a Carolina assistant, he won three ACC regular season titles. Carolina advanced to two Final Fours and won the 2017 National Championship. As a Tar Heel head coach, he's led Carolina basketball to the 2022 National Championship game. Ladies and gentlemen, I need you to put your hands together and welcome head coach Hugh Davis. Now, can we, I think y'all gotta go get ready. Can I talk to you for a second, coach, for people? Y'all can have a seat. 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 All right. Just a couple of questions before the guys come out. First of all, that's a very nice looking squad you got there, coach. Like, how has practice been? Like, what do you get from these guys? It seems like it's a lot of joking, a lot of laughing, a lot of banter back and forth. What do you like most about this group? Well, well, I can take it. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, B Dot. <laughs> well, first of all, I just, um, you know, when people ask me that question about this team, uh, the first thing that I say is, is two things. One, it's a blessing and a benefit. I told these guys uh, in the locker room prior to us coming out here on the floor, I've been a part of a number of teams as a player and as a coach. And there's very few teams that I've been a part of that genuinely enjoy being around each other, like this group right here. Um, it, 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 it is. That joy and thankfulness and appreciation for your teammate. It, it, it. Turn the music down. There we go. That's the volume we need right there. No, we good. You got that one? We don't need the music in the backdrop. Turn that down. We want to hear Coach. Okay, no, no. I was just saying it's such a blessing and an honor, and it translates on the floor. And um, one of the things that I'm excited about tonight is, it's, it, you know, for me, I get to see this every day, but for you guys, you can see what I'm talking about by the way that they play the game of basketball together. Absolutely. Now, of course, because we're excited. We're excited to see this new group. Yeah, me we've, too. We've, you are too. <laughs> yeah. We've seen them on social media. We've seen a lot of it. Um, how do you, just the new guys, how do you tell them or prepare them for the Carolina family and the Carolina experience? Well, I don't need to prepare them. This is the reason why they came here. They wanted to be a part of this place and uh, from day, exactly, exactly. You know, from day one, from day one, these guys have said every day, it's we, not me. It's we, not me. And so you talk about the Carolina family and why it's so unique. You know, one of the things that I talk to the players all the time is I want you guys to be men of integrity. And so integrity has two meanings. It, it means, you know, doing the right things when no one is looking, but also saying the right things, but your actions backing it up. I got a great example of that. You know, I, I'm probably going to get a lot of text messages saying uh, this is not true. But I don't think there's a program in a country where their entire coaching staff played at the school that they're coaching at. Uh, for anybody that may have missed that, 
He said there is, there, he doesn't, to his knowledge. To my is, knowledge. To his knowledge. Okay. <laughs> there isn't any college in the country that has a coaching staff. Everybody played at that university. Put your hands together. For, that's Carolina family, baby. <laughs> Speaking of Carolina family, there is a member of the Carolina family yeah. that couldn't be here tonight. Yeah. But he left us a message. Yeah. Matter of fact, he left all of us a message. Can we please go to the message? Hello, Tar Heels. I'm so glad all of you could gather tonight to celebrate the start of another Carolina basketball season. Unfortunately, Laura and I cannot be with you this evening. As you know, I received a cancer diagnosis in the spring. The outpouring of support from our Tar Heel family during this journey has been humbling. Thank you. I am fighting and will continue to fight every day. But I am not alone. Cancer will eventually have an impact on all of our lives in some way. And the Carolina basketball program is not immune. One of our beloved staff members, Ken Cleary, had his own battle this summer. And I am so happy to say Ken is right back where he belongs, here at the Smith Center, running everything you see tonight at Live Action. Ken, we love you. Cancer is personal to Carolina basketball. Even before my diagnosis, it's been personal to our family for a long time. And we've supported UNC Children's Hospital in multiple ways, including raising money through our Father's Day basketball camp over the past 29 years. I admire the way Coach Davis has his team volunteering in the community, just the way Hubert and I were taught by Coach Dean Smith. Among other events, the team has participated in the Dribble for Victory Over Cancer, which just last month raised over $65,000. If you are able, I hope you will consider giving financially to support any of these great causes, or to the UNC AYA Cancer Program, or the Be Loud Sophie Foundation, which supports adolescents and young adults living with cancer. I also want to personally ask you to do something else. Everyone knows someone who is being affected by cancer. Tonight, when you get home, or sometime over the weekend, give that person a call, shoot them a text. Touching base matters. We feel your support and it helps us get through what might be the toughest days we have ever endured. That's a powerful way to have a major impact in the fight against cancer. I will not be in person with you on the Tar Heel Sports Network this season, but know that even if you don't see me, and I know I'm hard to miss. I will be cheering on our Tar Heels during every single game. Thank you for your support of Carolina basketball, a program we all love so much. Thank you also for supporting those we love, wherever they are, who are fighting this terrible disease. Nice entry pass to Montrez. I'm Eric Montross, and I am very proud to be a Tar Heel. Make some noise one time for Eric Montross. And now, Carolina basketball is doing just what Eric asked. The team has a check right here to recognize their donation of $25,000. Clap it up, Carolina family, from their autographed basketball program to the UNC Children's Hospital, donating it in Eric's honor. Accepting the check on behalf of UNC Children is Tanner Joe. He's from Asheboro, and he's been treated at UNC Children's for the past two years. He's an honorable member of the Carolina bas bas baseball team and joined the Tar Heels at practice on yesterday. I'm sorry, family. Now let's give a round of applause for everybody out here. Bryce, his family, the Tar Heels, Everybody fighting cancer. And let me just brag on the Tar Heels for a little minute. Both the men and the women's teams participated in the Dribble for Victory over cancer last month and helped raise more than $70,000 for the Pediatric Cancer Research Center. And by the way, not that raising money for cancer research needs to be a competition, but 
we definitely raised more money than that team in Durham, if anybody cares. Yeah, 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 yeah. We want to beat them in everything. We want to beat them in everything. And here's a wild number for you. Through its program of selling team autographed basketballs, the Tar Heels have raised more than $2 million to support community programs like Christmas shopping for the Salvation Army, activities at Hargraves Community Center, and of course, cancer research. Congratulations to Coach Davis, the current Tar Heels, and the Carolina basketball family. Clap it up one time, one last time, Carolina family. Now again, I started this job three years ago and it was the best job I've ever been awarded. But it happened because I talked about Eric Hoots. He was very important for that. And another gentleman who I'm gonna introduce very, very soon, okay? Matter of fact, am I introducing him now? Can I introduce him now? Okay, yes. All right. And we're going to take a quick break here in the Smith Center. You're watching live action with Carolina basketball, the men's scrimmage, when we come back. Uh, when we came in. And so uh, we were actually just watching uh, videos of our dances and things like that with my little ones. And, um, you know, obviously I think the biggest thing you, you really remember is the, uh, the environment, you know, and how the fans come out for – I mean, at the end of the day, this isn't a game. This isn't something that goes on a scoreboard or anything like that, but they still come out and, and support. So, um, yeah, those memories will always stick with you no matter how long it goes. Let me ask y'all this, too. Do you all hear the fans? Like, I know when you're on the court, like, sometimes you got to tune all that nonsense out. But when we're in here going crazy, like, watch this. Tour! Yeah! Do y'all hear that when y'all in here playing? Yeah, I heard it. When I was here, when I shot a three, everybody was like, oh, no! It may be better, though. I'm knocking it down now. Hey, they said we still love you. Hey, if you still love Theo, make some noise. Yeah. Last thing for you. We're about to bring out the team. When we do jump around, will you please dance? Will you please, will you please turn up for us one time? Just for, look, come on, Jake. Can you, will you, when, come on, man. If y'all, let's go. Let me hear it. Yes. Come on, man. I don't got no music. Oh, no, we're going to do it when they get ready to come out. When they come out and do the warm-ups, yeah. when we play jump around, you tee up on oh, the yeah, side. Oh, yeah, I got you, okay? I got you. All right, say, look, if you're ready for a scrimmage, let me hear you make some noise. with Carolina basketball. And alongside Matt Krause, I'm Kyle Straub. Hope you've enjoyed the program so far tonight. We got to know the women's team. We got to see the women's team in action. We've now been introduced to the men's program and it's time for them to go ahead and show us a little preview of what we have in store this season. And the preview, Kyle, showcases a team that has four returners and seven newcomers. There are a lot of new faces on this Carolina men's basketball team for 2023-2024. And yes, it's an exciting roster, but there's a lot of questions to be answered. So looking forward to seeing some of them answered tonight and moving forward throughout the season. Of all those newcomers, just two of them are freshmen, but two big time freshmen brought in by Coach Davis and his staff. We start with Elliot Cadeau, that point guard position in Carolina is so important he's expected to fill in the role. The latest in a long line of point guards to wear the uniform number two for Carolina basketball. Cadeau reclassifying over the late spring, early summer portion of the calendar to rejoin the Tar Heels a year early. And so he will be alongside of Zayden High. High, a big guy, 6'9", will be a factor in the post rotation for the Tar Heels, the MVP of the prestigious Hoop Hall Classic, a Premier High School events held each January. Yeah, interesting note on the two freshmen. They both played prep ball their last season before coming to Carolina. They played each other for the national championship. Now teammates here at Carolina. And, you know, you have that reclassification from Cadeau. But when we talked with Coach Lebo especially, he talked about that year of prep school for both of them 
really being big because it got them up to speed or a little bit closer to up to speed than typically for a freshman. Yeah, it's a big transition from the high school game into the college game, but that prep school level, like you said, Kyle, it's kind of an intermediate step. You're playing more talented competition. You've got more talented players around you and it prepared both Cadeau and High for that jump and especially for Cadeau coming in a year earlier than originally anticipated. I want to ask you about him because there's always that worry with the reclassification, how somebody can adjust, but Cadeau not just playing prep ball, he also is a member of the full Sweden national team. How much is that going to help him? He's got international experience, so he has played at some of the highest levels, even if it's not ACC basketball. He's also a little bit older. He's 19 years old. He's only a month younger than Seth Trimble, who played last season for the Tar Heels as a true freshman. So Cadeau, while there will be a learning curve, there's always a learning curve to college, he has enough in his toolkit and his experience to prepare him for this level. Besides the two transfer, or six, uh, excuse me, the two freshmen, transfers are where Coach Davis really went and did his most work. And these three specifically, we decided to highlight. And Harrison Ingram coming from Stanford there at the top. All three of these transfers, potential starters for the Tar Heels this year. Ingram was a player that was recruited by Carolina out of high school. He's from the Dallas area, participated on the Stanford roster the last couple of years. You see the numbers he put up there. And then Cormac Ryan brings a veteran and a shooting presence to this team. Ryan, like Ingram, began his collegiate career at Stanford all the way back in the 2018-2019 season and spent the last few seasons at Notre Dame, so he's familiar with the ACC. He's familiar with the style of play and the personnel of some of the teams across the conference and brings that here to Carolina for his last year of eligibility. And as Coach Lebo told us, he's here to win coming off of a disappointing season last year at Notre Dame. And then there's Jalen Withers. Withers, a former All-ACC freshman team pick, was on a Louisville team that really struggled last season. But he's a North Carolina native from the Charlotte area, so he gets to come back to his home state and has a real shot to start for the Tar Heels this season. Will play a big role either way. Tar Heels have their first game of the season, November 6th against Radford. They do have an exhibition on the schedule there. You see on the 27th against St. Augustine's to give them a little more time to get ready. But you look at this non-conference schedule, the battle for Atlantis is going to be tough with teams like Memphis, Michigan, Stanford also there, which could be a fun matchup if they play Stanford that early with Ingram coming over from the card. And Jared Haas, a former Tar Heel assistant, is the head coach there at Stanford. But you look at the battle for Atlantis, you start off with Northern Iowa, always a pretty solid Missouri Valley team, and then win or lose, you're playing either Villanova or Texas Tech. And you don't have to look very far back in the record books to see both of those programs playing on the last Monday night of this season. They've been there within the last five years, so that's going to be a tough game. And then good gracious look at the month of December. Well, it starts off <laughs> November 29th with Tennessee in the inaugural ACC-SEC Challenge. Rick Barnes balls, always a tough team. Beat Duke in the NCAA tournament last year in the second round. UConn won the national championship last year. New York City, a great Tar Heel hotbed, but also close to home for the Huskies. Kentucky and Atlanta, that'll be a fun one. And Oklahoma and Charlotte, the Jumpman Invitational. So a real tough schedule on the back side of the non-conference slate for the Tar Heels this year before Charleston Southern wraps it up. Carolina hoping to rebound off of a season that saw them miss the NCAA tournament, but they played well at home though. 12 and three overall, as we take a look at that home schedule, that matchup with Duke, always the one that everybody looks for, February 3rd here in Chapel Hill. Yeah, it's the middle of the season this year, so the regular season concludes at Duke for the Tar Heels since it is an even year. But you look at some of the marquee teams coming in, NC State in the second to last Saturday of the regular season, Miami on Big Monday yet again. You know the Tar Heels will be thinking about what happened on a big Monday last year when Miami came in and handed them one of those home defeats. So it should be another fun season to spend center. First ACC game against Florida State. That'll be here on December 2nd. Some newcomers for Carolina. A lot of newcomers, but some familiar faces for the Tar Heels, especially R.J. Davis and Armando Baycott. Armando Baycott utilizing the extra year of eligibility back for a fifth season at Carolina. He's already the program record holder for career rebounds and double doubles. Set that in the same game, a home win against NC State last year. And R.J. Davis, a true senior, 
expected to run the offense yet again for the Tar Heels. Both of those guys right around 16 points a game. The proven commodities on the team with a lot of question marks. Seth Trimble, Jalen Washington, the other two returners for North Carolina from last year's squad. All right, quick rundown of the rules. A little bit different from the women because the men's game is played differently. We're going to have two halves, 12 minutes each. It is not going to be a running clock. Formal operation on the clock for those 12 minutes. They are going to take media timeouts, so we'll step aside with them at under eight and under four in each the first and second half, and then we'll have a five-minute halftime, which we will stick with you here on ACC Network. Four. As far as the teams go, blue and white, Elliot Cadeau, Paxson Wojcik, Jalen Withers, Armando Baycock, James Okonkwo, and Creighton Lebo. In white, it'll be R.J. Davis, Cormac Ryan, Harrison Ingram, Jalen Washington, Zayden High, Dewey Ferris, and Rob Landry. Blue wins the tip, Cadeau on... Going to take the first shot and knock it down from just beyond the elbow. Young player that Jeff Lebo, in our conversation with the Carolina assistant prior to this event, said he's one of those guys that's good when the lights are on. And the lights are on unofficially for the first time tonight for Cadell. Yeah, that was the thing that stuck out to me, too, because he, he had also said he's quiet. He kind of needs to learn to find his voice, especially if you're going to be the point guard for this program but I'm curious to see what he does when those lights are on. Nice cut and to the basket for Wojcik, the grad transfer. Paxson Wojcik from Brown and Elliot Cadeau, the other end of the age spectrum. Off the tip, creates some space, calmly knocks down the mid-range jumper there. Hands up, hands up, hands up. Wojcik with two seasons at Loyola College and then two more at Brown had a little under 800 points total between those four years at 326 assists. But I think what Carolina fans and what Coach Davis is looking for the most out of them, three-pointers in 99 college games, over 100 made threes. 38% from behind the arc last season at Brown, and that is the number one reason why Paxton Wojcik is at Carolina this year. There's Cormac Ryan out of New York, the transfer from Notre Dame. Another transfer, Withers off his mark with the shot. It was Ingram from the corner, has it roll out, and Baycott pulls down the rebound. It'll be interesting to see how long it takes for the, the team to kind of meld together and, and get comfortable with each other on the court. When we talk with the coaching staff, it's like, you know, they've been together all summer long. They've been working. They're getting familiar with each other. And we just heard Coach Davis say, this group loves to play with each other, but there's still that feeling out process when you have somebody else in a different jersey on the other side. Yeah, when you love playing with each other, it makes it easier to get acclimated to one another. But still, until you've gone through battles and as you said, Kyle, with a team wearing another jersey, you sometimes don't know. And that's why it's beneficial that Carolina does open up with three straight games against mid-major foes at home before they get into that tough stretch later on in the non-conference play. Able to get Ryan a look on a squared up three. Couldn't knock it down. Withers spinning, twisting, can't get it, but the put back by Baycock. And that's going to be a fun combo to see out there because Withers can be more of a stretch four, and Baycott can clean up the glass. And stretch four in Hubert Davis's system. We saw how that paid off in 2022 with Brady Manick. It was something that, while Pete Nance filled the role and had his flashes last season, an effective stretch four combo with a healthy Armando Baycott, that can be really, really dangerous. I think the one difference, though, is <laughs> coaching staff told us Jalen Withers, probably the most athletic player on this team don't know that that's what would have been said about Brady Manick, although he still had a big enough impact. Bang, bang. R.J. Davis on Cadeau, and it's a matchup there that in practice is a little brother, big brother relationship that they really are going to focus on, and they think Davis can help him grow really quickly. Baycott showing a little bit of range. That's one of the things that he has been working on the last couple of off seasons. 
told he's slimmed down, lost a few pounds. And also that he's healthy. You know, that ankle that's bothered him throughout his career, it is not currently a problem at the start of the season, and that, that's great to see. And for Armando, yes, he's coming back, utilizing the fifth year of eligibility to play one more year, but for any of his aspirations at the next level, being able to add that range to being more effective scoring the basketball other than just right under the basket is a necessity. That's some good defense there from Washington that turns into points on the other end for White. They go quickly back up court. Pass off the fingertips of Baycott. It'll go back to Team White, who's got the, the early lead here. Checking into the game, Dewey Ferris. There's Jalen Washington now in his sophomore season, and kind of like Tiani Key for North Carolina, coming off of injuries last year, he played, but you could tell there was still some getting comfortable, getting fully back, if not physically, mentally as well. In the parallel with the number 13 on the jersey, right? But uh, in the case of Jalen Washington, he's a player that the coaching staff says he's a guy that does the little things right, and they just need him to be healthy. So interested to see the kind of impact that he's going to have in a second season, and ideally a first one fully healthy. High with a couple of baskets for Team White. High school averaged 17 points, nine rebounds over three seasons at Smithsonian Valley High School before he went to Arizona Prep in Chandler, Arizona. This brings us to our first media timeout here. It's live action with Carolina basketball. An early lead for Team White here in the men's scrimmage for live action with Carolina basketball alongside Matt Krause, um, Kyle Straub. Last year, Armando Baycott averaged a double-double for his second straight season, 15.9 points, 10 and a half rebounds, and he is already showing that dominant force that he can be. The all-time leader in double-doubles in Carolina basketball history. Six points early on tonight. Saw him clean up the glass and put it back in, showing off some of the athleticism down there in the low post. As we said, Kyle, he is finally in a, a full health better physical condition than he was at the start of last year and coaching staff said he's a guy that they hold to a higher standard he's been through college basketball for the last four years and that it's reflected in how he's coached on a day in and day out basis yeah, they said if you're coming back for a fifth season we're gonna have to put you at a higher level than everybody else and that means in practice too and i've heard some of the comments from some of the players of i knew he could be dominant but i didn't know he was that dominant and they want that every minute from him this season. R.J. Davis, another guy they expect to have a lot of dominating performances, gets to the bucket and will be fouled. Leading returning scorer for the Tar Heels at 16.1 points a game last year. And an honorable mention all ACC season. As a free throw shooter, 88%, which was tops on the team for the Tar Heels last year as well. You see Cadeau there behind him. There'll be times where they're both on the floor, so that'll be two ball handlers for Coach Davis. You can put it in the hands of the veteran or the freshman. There's a lot of versatility. Cadeau from the free throw line, a little bit strong. Rebound brought down by Harrison Ingram. And back to Ingram, short on the three. Rebound for Okonkwo. Can we talk about ball handlers? Seth Trimble, who's not participating in the scrimmage tonight, he's also a guy who's capable of playing with the ball in his hands. In fact, he's a player that you could see play the one, the two, or the three this season. As the Tarios look for ways to get him on the court. Yeah, they've really been happy with the work he has put in in the offseason to get better. Coaching staff says we just got to get him confident. Transition short on the three. Look at Cadeau getting down there, getting the rebound coast to coast. Speed and passing, two of the great elements in Elliot Cadeau's game. Stay with Blue. 
Kunkwo battling down there. Out of England, and he's the third Tar Heel who has come overseas. Actually, it was kind of interesting when we were talking about all the different players. I said to Coach Liebel, I said, you have so many players, I need you to introduce us to them <laughs> so we can introduce them to everybody else. And when he got to Okonkwo, he said, you know, I actually remember my roommate when I played Bucknell back in the day, one of the other players from England. And he said, sometimes I have flashbacks to the, to the accent. They caught with a spin on the baseline. Okonkwo tried to get the put back. And it'll go to White. And Okonkwo joined the program, the latest of any of the transfers, coming over in July from West Virginia. And he's playing with the Great Britain national team. So his adjustment period has been shorter than some of the other transfers. But another guy who can provide some depth at the post position and figures to factor in, especially with the shot blocking ability. Some nice work there from Davis to get the freshman Kado off balance and commit the foul on the step back send RJ back to the free throw line again. Davis will not just be looked to to handle the ball, but also step it up defensively now that he's a senior. White extending their lead here, still in the first half. We'll have another 12 minutes after a five minute break. Still gotta get to our second media timeout. Lebo with the shot, knocks down the three. And what a cool story, Creighton Lebo, now with scholarship as the Tar Heels found themselves with a couple extra ones, decided to change his number so he could wear his dad's old number. He was wearing number 25, 14 was freed up and decided to wear his dad's old number, approached his dad to ask about that. And Jeff Lebo told us it just fills him with so much pride seeing Creighton out there wearing that number 14. But at first he said, well, his mom and his grandparents love it even more so. <laughs> Don't expect him to take any of the old jerseys that dad has laying around and try and wear them. He's got to wear his own, he said. Exactly. Baycott going to be whistled for the push in the back, clearing Washington out. Withers back on for blue, high back on for white. Bottom right corner of your screen, you see Rob Landry, a walk-on player who's wearing 22 this year, the same number as his father, Pierce Landry. So. Lebo and Landry both changing their numbers this year to honor their fathers. Washington tries the three off the mark. Carolina a little bit cold here in this first half from beyond the arc. There's a hard foul on Baycott. And that'll send him to the free throw line. Trying to get up over top of Washington. And Davis was there, High was there. Whole bunch of bodies. Baycott last year, 66% from the charity stripe. It's a player you want to see knocking him down. I presume that he's going to have a lot of opportunities at the free throw line if the offense is flowing the way that it's intended. Strong on that one. Lane violation, though. He's going to get another chance. I think they got Cormac Ryan crossing that line a little too early. You know, so many newcomers, we asked, what's the biggest thing to get everybody together and, and get them all on the same page? And they, they said, hey, listen, it comes down to how do you adjust coming to Carolina and the expectations that come along with it? Everybody's going to be different. Pump fake there from Ryan, kicks back out to high. Calling for the screen instead, gives it up. An offensive foul, Washington caught with the illegal screen. Be interesting to see how much playing time Washington gets this year. Saw action in 20 games last year for the Tar Heels. Average two points a game, but remember back when he was a freshman, Coach Davis said he is the best shooting big I've ever seen coming out of high school. 
and we've definitely seen flashes from him. You think about the Virginia game in Charlottesville last year when Armando Baycott went out with the injury early and Pete Nance was unavailable. Washington played a bunch that game and was critical in keeping the Tar Heels in it until the very late stages. No, nearly able to knock that one away. White keeps possession. Great feed on the baseline drive and high with his six point. There's a little bit out of control, took some contact and throws it away. And that'll take us to our next media timeout. But Blue doing a good job moving the ball, trying to get themselves back into this one. We'll be back with the final 352 of the first half. Scrimmage, Matt Krause alongside myself. I'm Kyle Straub. Take a look at Zayden High getting up high with this dunk on a baseline drive. True freshman playing in front of Carolina fans for the first time, showing off his hops. 6'9", 225-pound freshman out of Rockwell, Texas. One of two freshmen brought in by the Tar Heels this year, Elliot Cadeau, the other one. And it'll be uh, really fun to see how they integrate themselves into such a veteran lineup with the transfers that were brought in and then the returning Baycott and Davis. And you have to imagine all the transfers coming in is definitely a benefit because there are so many new faces as another freshman, Cadeau. Looks like he may have taken a shot to the face there. Got poked in the eye, something like that. Had the shot blocked from behind by fellow freshman High. The contact is what drew the whistle and that'll send Cadeau to the free throw line. Second team, Max Prep All-American in 2023. Averaged 11 and seven and a half with points and assists. Helped lead his team to a 27 and one record. And that season really gave him the confidence to make the decision that, hey, you know what? I'm ready to make that jump now. Don't need to wait. Let's reclassify and get into college especially coming off of a sophomore season in high school in which he didn't play due to an ankle injury. Davis trying to get it ahead. Washington able to save it, can't get the finger roll though. Rebound brought, back, brought down by Wojcik. Back the other way, beautiful pass from Cadeau to Baycott. Davis being guarded by Wojcik. Son of former Carolina assistant. Block from Withers. Ingram there to clean it up, though. And that's something that Ingram is going to give Carolina. Kind of that Swiss Army knife. He can do it all. Really versatile player. You can see him play some of the three, some at the four. Kind of the player that allows them to utilize different lineup combinations based on situations as games go along. Lebo going to be whistled for the foul on the floor. Take another look at this freshman to center or senior connection here. We've said it that Elliot Cadeau's passing is perhaps his greatest attribute as a player, and you see it on full display there. We asked Jeff Lebo, who does he remind you of, of any point guard in Carolina history? He said, huh, that's a good question. The first name out of his mouth was Ed Coda, but not as flamboyant. You know, I was actually waiting for him to say Kendall Marshall. And he I said, thought so too. And he said Coda, and I was like, wow, okay. Yeah. That's that's a big time compliment right there. Not to take anything away from Kendall Marshall, but only here a couple of years versus Ed, who, I mean, that's one of those Mount Rushmore guys for right. Carolina. Foul going to put Cormac Ryan on the free throw line. Ryan in his sixth year of college basketball. Kyle, he is currently pursuing his second master's degree. Graduated from Notre Dame with his undergrad degree in business and then his MBA as well. Started off actually at Stanford, too. So two Stanford transfers, I guess, if you want to look at it that way, with Ingram as well as Ryan. Ryan played a game against Carolina when he was with Stanford as a freshman, had 14 points against the Hughes. It's a game here in the Smith Center. He's one of those guys that they're really gonna look to help with the three-point shooting, which was something that they struggled with last season. 
the percentage much lower than Hubert Davis would like. Ferris able to get the little finger roll in. Cadeau in the mismatch, gonna take Ferris all the way to the hoop, leaves it a little bit short though, and Ferris with the rebound. Back the other way, good ball movement, corner three. Ryan, nothing but net for White. That's got to make Carolina fans happy. Pushing the pace in transition, getting a stop on the defensive end, kicking it forward, and knocking down the open look. Meanwhile, R.J. Davis almost just stopped by to say hello. He was able to pump the brakes. 36 steals last season for the Tar Heels, which led the team. Baycott down low with high on him. Good help defense, Ingram able to knock it away, and last touch by Baycott, they said. Savvy move there from Ingram, coming through with Withers, just poking it away. Ingram, a late add in the transfer portal for the Tar Heels. Last guy that they got to at least commit. We talked about how Okonkwo were a little bit late getting here to campus, but Ingram, the last one they brought in. The connection with Jared Haas being the head coach at Stanford, and now he comes to Carolina. Great defense there, high, relentless, able to take it away and get the bucket. One freshman stealing it from the other. But I said Ingram, a Swiss Army Knife type of player. Last year, he was one of seven players in the country, at least in Power Five schools, to have at least 10 and a half points, five and a half rebounds, three and a half assists on the season. Baycott able to get the and one, and he'll go back to the free throw line. A lot of talk going into last year for North Carolina coming off that spectacular run through the NCAA tournament, knocking off Duke in the Final Four before eventually falling to Kansas in the national title game. Things didn't go the way they wanted to last year, but I asked the coaching staff, specifically Baycott and Davis coming back, those guys from those teams, where was the mindset? They said hungry. Yeah, they said they've got a lot on their shoulders and there's a lot of pain from last season and falling short of those expectations. But even with the newcomers that came in through the portal, you know, Cormac Ryan coming from Notre Dame, they didn't have the season that they wanted. You look at Harrison Ingram and Stanford, they didn't have the season that they wanted. So everybody's kind of collectively bought in coming into this program, trying to bounce back from a tough year last year. They're all, like you said, Kyle, really, really hungry. White with a nine point lead. Ingram sees the clock, they're gonna hold for the last one. Davis on Withers, good defense from Withers and the shot off the mark from RJ Davis. 12 minutes in the books, we got 12 more. We're gonna take a break. It is live action with Carolina basketball. the opportunity to get to know the newcomers. Satan High, one of those newcomers, the freshman, having himself a pretty good night. 6'9", forward, showing off his ability to score around the basket. There's some defense, swiping it from his fellow freshman, Elliot Cadeau, and finishing. Taking a nice feed from R.J. Davis, getting up there with the flush. Satan High just came over points. and gave me a fist bump. He knew you were talking about exactly. it, that's why. <laughs> 21 points his junior season at Smithsonian Valley, then transferred to Arizona Prep, where played Elliott Cano in the national championship game. Cormac Ryan, hesitation move, gets his own rebound off the miss. He was an interesting guy when we were talking with Coach Lebo because he said he's one of those dudes that every single play, every single drill, it's like it's a national championship to him. Cormac Ryan, a guy who plays with a lot of intensity. Definitely brings some of that competitive fire and leadership to this program. 
We saw that on display in the game against Notre Dame here last year where he was involved in that skirmish along the baseline. Wound up getting a flagrant two for it. It caught from downtown off the back iron. Took six threes last year. Didn't knock any of them down, but as he has slowly worked on his range, trying to test it out here as well. It's a good chance to do that. We said the lights are on, but low pressure situation. It's a foul win against Ingram on the push off, so blew an opportunity to eat into this nine point lead for White. Jaden Withers with the turnaround, the transfer from Louisville. Spent the last couple of seasons as the captain for the Cardinals. I think Carolina wants to see deliver energy and attention every day. Those keys for the season. 6'9", 215. You can see the length, the athleticism we talked about before, the ability to play multiple positions, which is going to be key for Coach Davis this season while he figures out his rotations and shows the strength there, getting the bucket through contact. Quickly on the attack. Good position down low for Washington. Couldn't handle the over the top pass from high though. Cano thought about that deep three, but instead gives it up. Last year, you look at the breakdown of games for Carolina between their wins and losses. In their wins, Baycott led the team with nearly 18 points a game. In the losses, just over 13 and third on the team in scoring. There's a lot that goes into those reasons, but just shows how important he is. And not just his ability to score it, Kyle, but we've talked a lot throughout the night about Carolina looking for proven shooters, guys like a Cormac Ryan or a Paxson Wojcik that came out of the transfer portal to join the program this year. There were so many games last season in which opponents would shut down Armando Baycott and there was limited offensive options around him because the shots simply weren't falling. If you get players that can consistently knock in perimeter shots, you're able to withstand an opponent that's going to crowd the paint, try and get Armando in foul trouble, and try and take him out of the game. And that is an element that sometimes last season just wasn't there. Wojcik, one of those players that you mentioned, nice little move to get down inside. It's actually originally from Chapel Hill, and that's because his dad, Doug, was an assistant for the Tar Heels from 2000 until 2003. And 107 three-pointers in his four years, two at Loyola Chicago, two at Brown. As Davis spots up for a wide open three, a little bit too strong, though. Wojcik in there fighting for the rebound. Second team all Ivy last year, but also, Kyle, academic all Ivy. That is a high honor right there. That's a high honor for any conference you're in, but especially when you're in the Ivy. Beautiful move as Cadeau gets to the basket. There's Ingram with Withers on him. Ryan into the paint, surrounded by blue jerseys. There's going to be a foul whistled against Blue. It'll send us to our media break. Elliot Cadeau. And we'll get into the paint. A couple of newcomers for the Tar Heels. Elliot Cadeau, the freshman. Jalen Withers, the transfer. Alongside Matt Krause, I'm Kyle Stroud. Thanks for joining us here on Friday the 13th. Everybody is thinking about Halloween and football, but in Chapel Hill, it is basketball that is on the mind. Nice little turnaround there from Ingram. He gets his first bucket. I completely forgotten it was Friday the 13th. Does anything bad happen to you today, Kyle? No, it's been a fantastic day so far. Same on my end. So there you go. I think I'm just going to stay here until midnight to make sure that that happens, <laughs> and then I don't want to test the luck. Yeah. Step back from Wojcik, and, and I think that's going to be an over-the-back Ingram. It is who he will get indeed, battling with Withers down there for the rebound. 
talk so much about the newcomers for North Carolina. We didn't talk about one of the newcomers that's actually over on the bench there. One of the coaches for Team Blue as High gets another easy dunk. Excuse me, that time it was Okonkwo. But Marcus Page back in Chapel Hill. First season on the bench for the Tar Heels. And with the freshman Cadeau, R.J. Davis, another young guy in Trimble as a point guard. Page going to be a big, big guy to go and, and get some advice from. Yeah, Marcus Page, one of the best to do it. Remember the 2016 national runner-up team, the ACC championship team, and now is back taking the spot on the Carolina staff that was vacated by Jackie Manuel, another longtime Tar Heel that's now an assistant at American University. So in comes Marcus Page, and definitely one of those guys that can share some wisdom with, as you said, Kyle, a, a whole crop of potential ball handlers for this team. Now, Hubert said it while VDAT was interviewing him. Pretty sure Carolina is the only school in the country that every assistant played at Carolina as well. And it's not just the three primary assistants, but it's Marcus Page and all the and way Sullivan down the line. Well. Yeah. yeah, and that's something that for Carolina is extremely important: the culture, the family, what to expect as far as a point guard in this offense. Cott slows things down, gets it across to Cadeau. White had a big lead in this one. Blue has slowly chipped away and it had an opportunity to take the lead. A little bit strong on the three from Lebo, but Okonkwo with the offensive rebound and a fresh shot clock. Baycott off the dribble, a little turnaround and Blue on top for the first time. Probably, why not? Davis uses the screen of high to lose Cadeau and will draw the foul and go to the free throw line. That's one of those things when we were talking with Coach Lebo, he kind of pointed out with Cadeau that as a freshman, he felt like, you know, he came in pretty attuned to the game, but the defense is where the biggest adjustments are going to be. Learning to go around those screens where you're not switching like you do in high school. And definitely an adjustment period to get up to speed at the college level. And Carolina wants him to get his fouling under control a little bit. That's going to be a factor once you get into live game action. Davis misses the first, makes the second though. To tie this one up at 32 apiece. the way the coaching staff drew it up, right? Four minutes to go in a 24-minute scrimmage in a tie ball game. Get to work on some situationals. Withers, a corner three off the mark, rebounded by White. For Mac Ryan. Good look down low for Washington, and that one's going to go down. Ojik with Davis guarding him. Nice spin move and finishes with the left. Three-point threat, but shows he can also take you off the dribble. High looking to get it down low for Washington. Great recovery defense as Withers gets the block from behind. Ingram saves it from going out. Davis for three. And Withers gives it to his teammate, but he's in the wrong jersey, and White will get a bucket out of it. You could see his face yeah. right away. He said, I know you. Oh, man, oh, I shouldn't have no, done that. No. <laughs> After the bucket, Ryan gets the steal, runs the break, and Washington throws it down. There's the speed of Cadell right back the other way, and that's something that Carolina fans love to see from the point guard. Back and forth. I think, the, I think we're getting a little bit tired out here now. Yes. Both teams getting some easy buckets. And that is going to take us to our media timeout. A much needed one. Two and a half to go when we return. Hard to believe it's only the third season for Hubert Davis as the head coach of the Tar Heels. Twelve if you count his years as an assistant 
plus those four as a player winning a national championship. But he and his staff really excited for this season. A fixture in this program for several years as an assistant. And yeah, it is hard to believe it's only year three. Took the team to the national championship game in year one, trying to bounce back from last year's disappointing miss of the NCAA tournament. And this is definitely one of the more talented rosters in the country. Excited to see how it all plays out. So much has happened in his two yeah. years. Great challenge there from Washington to get the block on Baycott. You go back to first year, everything that goes around in the whirlwind of it being the first year that Carolina has a new head coach since Roy came back. And then they beat Duke on K's last night in Durham. And then they beat Duke in the final four. I mean, there was so many storylines that you can go and pick from. And then you have last year where it was kind of the opposite of it. I mean, even to get to the second Duke game in the final four, Carolina was in eighth seed. Yeah. You know? So having to knock off Baylor in that epic overtime game and then get through UCLA in the Sweet 16 and end the St. Peter's run. And it was just a remarkable set of events. And as you said last year, it was just... Oh, what a move from Cano! Yeah. If you take from Cadeau, definitely a bright part of the future to come this year. Flashes like that, the pass to Baycott in the first half. Easy to see why the coaching staff is so high on this freshman. You know, I thought it was very mature too. Somebody who came in as a reclassified freshman said, hey, listen, this isn't a one and done thing. I've got a multi-year plan. Not really what you hear from kids nowadays. Everybody's looking to make that jump as quick as possible. Yeah, everybody that wants to be a professional, the goal is NBA, NBA, NBA. But to be thinking about your college experience and how you're going to continue to grow and develop, that is, like you said, Tom, very mature. Wojcik with the foul on RJ Davis as clock runs down. Take another look at this nice move through traffic, up and under. And that kid's supposed to be in high school still. I'd say he's ready. Davis will go to the free throw line. I told you this one's going to be played like a regular game, and you see that happening here with Wojcik fouling Davis with the clock running down, and White out with a four-point lead. Davis in and out on the one-and-one. One. Last touched by High, and it will go to Blue. So the foul, at least that part of it, what Blue wanted. Picks up across midcourt, pull up three, knocks it down. Baycott gonna get called for the foul on Davis. He'll go back to the free throw line. Needing a bucket here. Cadeau spots and cans. What do we say? A little drama late? A little drama late. Davis. Now with just a one point lead, we'll go to the line for one and one. Just a reminder, the 27th here in Chapel Hill. That is a Friday, 7.30, Carolina in exhibition against St. Augustine's. Monday, November 6th. 7 o'clock game, ACC Network against Radford to open up the 2023-2024 season. Davis makes good on both. Three-point lead for White, 26 on the clock. Cadeau across midcourt. Same setup, this time they switch. Washington backs off, and Cadeau knocks it down again. Coach Lebo told us he's going to like it when the spotlight is on, and the spotlight is on him right now. In a big way. Back-to-back -back critical threes for Elliot Cadell. Just that little bit of separation as Washington laid off, and he pulled the trigger. That's a quick shot, too. Davis back to the free throw line again. Sean May over there coaching up Elliot Cadeau. May and Page, the coaches for Team Blue. May actually this year 
first time that he'll be the head coach for the JV team for a long time. It was Hubert Davis before he became the head coach of the main team. Helped them gain some of those head coaching experience moments carried over to the much bigger stage of the varsity level. Again, Davis with a couple of clutch free throws, knocks them both down, two point lead. Feel like this has got to be Cadeau, double team them, so they give it off, Baycott down low. Washington recovers, high there, Baycott, once, twice, Withers, blocked by Washington as well, and White is gonna win it. It's exciting when you have live action because you get the experience of seeing what the new team is. We got to do that with women. We got to do that with men. It's even better when you have a final where it comes down to the last couple seconds. Well, the whole point of this night, Kyle, is to feel the excitement and the intensity of Carolina basketball all over again, getting ready for the new season, and thrilling moments like that just underscore that point. Should be a fun year in Chapel Hill for both teams. Start of the regular season just around the corner. For Matt Krause, I'm Kyle Straub. So long from Chapel Hill. Hope you enjoyed live action with Carolina basketball. First game of the season for the Tar Heels, November 6th against Radford. So long and have a good night from the Dean Dome.